been mummified in a closet. That's one way of doing it, I suppose. It's all here after Pete packs the bags of another PA. Previously on Pete's PA, the shopping task caused frustration within the group. I, I really, really kiss their ass. Just, just get in. Yeah, just, yeah. just get in there. Right, okay. It was dog eat dog at the elimination. It's about taking each other out. Let's get rid of the all fucking bitches. Send them right out the fucking door. Goodbye. Well, there's any room for one big old bitch in this, not to me. But it was strong favourite Rhea who was told to walk. When Rhea went out yesterday, everyone was really, really shocked because they thought because she always spoke, she would be the strongest competitor. I think it's certainly affected Nikki. Oh God, it's, you know, it's so difficult. I made a connection with Rhea the very first day in the interview. For some reason, we just started chatting. We're very similar, which is a bit worrying. With Rhea going last elimination, you just don't know who's going or what's actually happening because she was obviously a hot favourite. Having faced elimination themselves, SJ and Damon are shaken by the experience. Where's Damon? Huh? Well, he's just in shock. He's in absolute shock. He had to hear people saying that he was the weakest link. Somebody has to, like, get the blame. I have to say, on leadership skills, then, Damon, I have to say the same. I'm sorry, Damon. Damon. Okay. okay, well done. That was just unbearable. I broke down. It's terrible to cry because then you're weak. But I'm not weak. If I care about someone, I can't stop my emotions. Yeah, I've got very close to Damon. He really makes me laugh. He really gets me. And in this house, you need to be able to have a bit of a laugh. And there's no job in the world that's worth it. No oh, job in the world. Oh, I don't want to always be crying on fucking camera. You know, my friends are going to think I'm taking a depressing pill. I am emotional. I, I can't help how I am. I, I care. I just care a lot. How was it? So am I. This week, he will be testing the remaining potential PAs on discretion. Can our candidates keep private information about Pete to themselves? Or will they give it all away to two journalists posing as his friends? Privacy to me is probably as important as oxygen. This week's task is a really sticky one. Michael and I are going to drop some casual gossipy crap. Then we're going to put them in the room with secret cameras with two journalists who are actually posing as my friends and see how much of that information those candidates will relay. There are certain things in my life that my PA will be privy to that I wouldn't even want my friends to know. So I think this is kind of one of the harshest tasks of all. We know it's been really, really hard, so we've arranged a little drink soiree and uh, cocktail thing. We had the drinks with Pete and Michael. It was lovely that they took some time out and they, you know, they're big, getting to know us as well. Um, it's just very, very nice for them to come chat to us. We're, we're trying to kind of adopt at some point in the next year or so. I've got to go to set a club because I'm going to be doing a DJ night. I told DJ. We've got to this club night coming together with Boy George and who else? It's just him really, but we heard him very gentle. Uh, yeah, 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 why? Because he's trying to raise some kind of 80 <laughs> <just> something thing. <laughs> We've just got a meeting next week with Guy Ritchie, and you know all that stuff wow. in the paper about him and Madonna? Because mm. he wants Pete to kind of go forward for his part in a new London. Really? Maybe Madonna's got a movie, is it? <laughs> no, it's a well, movie about the 80s called Fate to Fast. You know, no, what's it called? Fate to Fast or Fate to Oh, it's a preliminary name, though, isn't it? Fate to Grey. Fate to Grey, it's about the 80s. I guess that they want me to know he does a lot of gangster things. He wants to do a real scenic London. Boy George. Oh, really? Yeah, in an early, you know, his early kind of this guy is set, setting up a makeup company and wants both of us mm. to front the campaign. Oh, the and Pete's like, no, I seriously want to meet you in New York wow. in September. You can stay in my townhouse wow. and then we'll go over to Tokyo and start shooting. You know, you can get some input mm. and blah, blah, blah. Excellent. Brilliant. We'll play for you. Imagine it, 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 it
as Pete and Michael finish feeding out misinformation to the candidates, our two undercover journalists posing as Pete's friends arrive at the house. The girls were sat here in the living room saying that they were waiting for Pete and that they were going on to a club. <laughs> Wait, are you waiting for him? But you can't hurry him, you know what he's like. As the candidates get friendly with the undercover journalists, celebrity PA Donna Cooling settles down in the kitchen with Pete. People start to spill details about my life or anything I've told them. They are quite likely to have their tongues cut out. Loose lips cost lives. I'm very serious about it because in today's celebrity culture and the kind of tabloid crap that's written, I don't want any part of it. Okay, I totally agree. Do you want to take a look at this? Okay. Yeah. She's not denying anything, is she? No. Is it? Um, yeah, I'm not even. What's his name? Uh, Guy Ritchie or something? Yeah, it's not Guy Ritchie. God, you should uh, tell anything. Tell Guy, Guy Ritchie, Ritchie yeah. I've got uh, makeup on. I'm living in Tokyo. Uh, no, yeah. That wasn't even prompted. No, she was quite easy to blab, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah, so makeup in Tokyo. Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of think whatever anybody says to her that, that she's just going to agree with. Yeah. What, what did you dress Pete up in? Um, <laughs> yeah, we dressed dress him up in public. In a nylon yeah. tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's going to have hated that. Yeah, well, he's explained he hasn't got an amazing sort of lifestyle. No, he hasn't. It's like, what's he on about my lifestyle for? Mm. You know about the yeah, baby. Oh. Baby. You know about the, she could have said you know about the bunions. Exactly, baby. she wasn't, it could have been anything. <laughs> but his shoes are a really good headspace. What does she know about my fucking headspace? And they said they were going to have to do about the 80s. Good grief. <sighs> oh, God. That was a big, a big fall down for SJ there. Has he told you guys about the baby? Yeah. What baby? Oh, Fabulous. great, what baby? Fabulous. I love it. It's personal life, it's personal life, and yes, obviously I'm still friends, because you might be yeah. a really close friend. Yeah, no, it's fine, no, and actually... I won't discuss anyway. Oh, oh personal life is his bit. personal life, I love it. He's given us a bit of an insight into him, but we don't know enough, but I can't go around saying things about me. Jesus, well, fantastic. John, I Nikki, trust him with straight my away, life. what, baby? Yeah. That's fantastic. I think he's... Um, there's a... Because he's got Fade to Grey or something. He's up for yeah. Maybe the roller. Phil. No, look, I'm just talking about the film. Fade to Grey, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, no, I think that's specifically why he was taking the acting lessons. Damon doesn't shut up. No, you can always constantly hear and jibber-jabber in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Trust is a big thing. Uh, <laughs> Ironic. Yeah. Is he going to marry my daughter? Yeah. In July. <laughs> what, I have received an invite. He's got verbal diarrhea. He has. We were due to do like the stag do um, and then roll into from like the start of audition to the stag do to the honeymoon. You see, Ian only starts to blabber because he's following he's, yeah, exactly. Damon's lead. Do you think you guys are going to be involved in the stag do? <laughs> I don't know. We'll be working like top as waiters. Oh my yeah. god, working as top as waiters. <laughs> Jesus, that's a frightening thought. Do you think he makes a good couple with Michael? Oh, yeah. they are completely in love. Absolutely, completely. They, they, love. they are quite lovey dovey. They're also quite volatile. How do you know we were volatile? So not only is he blabbing something, he's adding his own story, he, he doesn't know me from. Adam? I won't be taking this as a compliment. I think you must have been told before you look a bit like to Adam's character. Does that annoy you? I don't like her. She's not a very nice person. She's got lovely boobs. Do you know her? Yeah. Her mum's is my little. Oh! Who? Commenting on Charlotte Church. The undercover journalists have heard enough, and as they make their exit, Pete is not impressed. Wow. <clears throat> what did you think? I could explode, actually, because I thought, you know, they all got messy and big-mouthed, all except for Nikki. Some of you really sold me out for 40 pieces of silver. Just swallow me up and die? The bit that I'm absolutely furious about is you commented on mine and Michael's relationship. What are you talking about, you stupid? Yeah, it must be. This is not an act. I'm pissed off rotten. After what they thought was a night off having a drink and a chat, the candidates are in for a nasty shock. I'd like to introduce you to Martel from The Sun and Katie from Reveal magazine. Last night we told you we were Pete's very good. 
friends. We're not. In real life, we're both working journalists. And our exercise last night was to find out how indiscreet you would be with information, personal information that had been given to you. And if you'd been an ordinary punter listening to some stories last night, a story on Pete Burns could have gone up to about 10 grand. It was a little bit worrying because obviously we'd known what had gone on in the room and some people had said quite a lot. A lot of the juicy gossip, even if you're just saying yes and agreeing to it, it can still be used as a source. So we were just here to see who would actually give us the best stories. If I was a punter, I would have been a very rich lady by now. Everything I said was another dollar note. Whoever you talk to, you have to keep in mind it could be a journalist or someone after a story because with the money that stories are going for now on celebrities, everyone is out there to get something. When Pete's friends did walk in and announced they were actually journalists, I was just uh, floored, by it, gutted, embarrassed, um, nervous. Some of the things the two journalists said were quite scathing. I was quite worried about your behaviour. But rather than just take their word for it, we actually wired this room for secret filming. And we're now going to watch video of your indiscretions. Oh, my God. I was absolutely horrified. Just swallow me up and die. And obviously, this has consequences for someone. So just think about the kind of stuff that you're going to see now. Everyone was mortified to watch himself back on that film. Is doing a film? Yep. Yeah, it's all going to take. It's a really exciting time to join their team. So they've got a lot of things on the go. It could be really exciting to do. Yeah. Has he told you guys about the baby? What baby? Yeah. His personal life and obviously. Because I think he's. Because he's got face to face questions and Yeah. I'm going to talk to him about it later, but to be honest, I haven't had a lot of time to see him since the filming. Where's he going to adopt the baby from? It's amazing. I should have known, really, but uh, gutted. What we've just seen is pretty damning stuff. Imagine what Pete would say about it. Well, actually, don't imagine what Pete would say about it. I'm going to bring him in. When Rob said Pete was coming to me, I just thought I really just did just kick me out with a big fat boot and just say, you silly old cow. You yeah, know, when Pete walked in the room, he was furious. His face just told the story, basically. He was fuming. He was really upset. I'd really like to tell you that I'm happy, but I'm not. My heart just sunk, you know, through the bottom of my feet, practically. I thought, Christ, he's going to crucify me. Discretion is one of the main things that I'm looking for in a PA. And some of you really sold me out for 40 pieces of silver. SJ. I'm sorry. It's too late to be sorry. They were journalists. I'm just hearing my heart in my ear, thinking, oh my God, can it get any worse? You just unraveled, and given more time, you'd have completely, completely come undone. If I had been his PA at that time, I would have offered my resignation. Ian, you were really easily led there. This is a game where people will lead you on to give out information. Too much came out, although you were very easily overridden by, guess who? Damon. You got verbal diarrhea there. You did not stop. Right through that whole thing, you thought it was a real nice out with friends and you could not stop jabbering. Now, the bit that I'm absolutely furious about is you commented on mine and Michael's relationship. Yes, it is lovey-dovey, but when have you seen any evidence whatsoever of it being volatile? I haven't really. So what are you talking about, you stupid? Yeah, must be. My heart really went, went out to Damon. We told you about a baby, and we told you various other things to see if you'd let it go. But we didn't tell you we were volatile. And also they got the date of the wedding. And we also got a particularly alarming promise that you've got to be a topless waiter at the wedding. No, that was just, just having... Uh, yeah, yeah. I know, but they take that seriously. If that, was, if that was a journalist, they'd put, Damon's going to be a topless waiter at their gay orgy wedding. <laughs> nice thought. Yeah. 
I could have crap splashed all over the news of the world tomorrow, stuff that you weren't free to give out. My personal life remains absolutely personal. If a PA is working around me, they're actually involved in my personal life, but that doesn't mean that they can go out and chat about my personal life to anybody under any circumstances whatsoever, no matter how much drink is involved. I'm really not happy about that, and this is not an act. I'm pissed off rotten. You're going to get set up in this business, left, right, and center, and it's going to appear in the papers, and, you know, then I will be volatile. And I really don't know what you have seen to think that Michael and my relationship is volatile. I really don't know. You've really let me down. What do you guys think of your behavior? Disgusting. Well, just feel it. I'm totally unaware, and you're absolutely spot on. You can always be on top of it. I would never even say I was a celebrity PA. But you know, in a situation, some of my actual friends, you know, some of my friends might not know those things, but because my PA is actually around me, my PA will get to see a lot more I than my friends. So I keep things away from my friends because it's my business and nobody else's. The PA has got to blend in and be part of the furniture and zip until I say, spread that around. I can only apologize. Mm -hmm. I have no defence, it's all, it's all there are evidence, so I have no defence. That was the case of verbal diarrhoea. Yeah, so I, all I can do is apologise. Just apologise. I think he's up the certified. I'm going to hold my hands up and talk. Shelley, you didn't offer up information, but you agreed with everything that was given to you. I know, all I can say, Pete, is I'm, I'm really, really sorry. Natalie, you were quite free to comment on Charlotte Church there from what we saw. Um, do you know Charlotte Church? I've obviously been overly dramatic and gone, oh, don't like her, don't like her, which I shouldn't have. All we can go on is the evidence we've seen with our eyes, and we've seen that you're just blabbing all over the place, and that's a problem. Apart from Nikki, I have to say, who was a soul of discretion. So, you know, there were multiple attacks on you, and you said, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not at liberty to say. The only thing to take away is, you know, just a little bit friendlier, because, you know, you came across as quite a frosty person. But, you know, in terms of discretion, well done. Mm. Some of you let me down quite badly in that task, really badly. When you read things in those papers that it says, according to sources, where do you think it comes from? Usually somebody close who got pissed, who can't stop talking about it, because they are like the snake in the Garden of Eden. They will lead you astray. On one occasion, a journalist asked Michael if they could use his mobile phone, and they have a way of clicking in and taking the numbers out of it, but he was clever. Yeah. Michael gets it all the time. There's going to be another chance for you. You're going to get to meet my friends and loved ones, and they're going to help me decide who should be my PA. Bye. Poor Damon. I, he looks so distraught. I really did actually feel quite sorry for him. What can I say? I have no defence. You know, I'm sort of a martyr on the altar of the of the gossip TV. I just couldn't defend myself, so I just decided that lesson learned. I just felt very, very. Well, I just felt very, very down after that, very, very low, very stupid. Um, I felt like I'd let myself, well, completely let myself down. I was definitely the worst in that one. If a PA is indiscreet about their client, it's the kind of thing that gets written up in a paper and it could lead to lawsuits, you know. The PA is going to get fired, the client could lose their career, could lose money. Um, you know, it's all dire consequences. There are some terrible stories out there of, of, you know, people, paparazzi do go through celebrities' bins. It's part of their job. They've got to find out information. So you've got to make sure that everything is destroyed. Anybody that comes to the house, workmen that come to the house, builders just don't keep anything lying around so you're getting all flustered i only want to know is there a wedding all i would say to that is that immediately cut me off as aggressive and if you want to deal with me again in future yeah. do you think we're going to have a good rapport he may be a little guy but he can stand up for himself in what way you mean he'd go off on me like the clappers if i pissed him off when i'm in the zone of like this is work i don't need to any i don't need to stop just get on with it until the job's done until you faint from lack of well maybe hydration. exhaustion In light of their poor performance with the undercover journalists, Pete has organised a masterclass in discretion. Of paramount importance for a PA is knowing exactly what you can and cannot say in every situation. Often when you're working for a celebrity, all types of people will try to glean information from you. And other than the client's close family, you're the only other person that's going to know all of this information. So it's imperative, as your client's PA, to know what to say and what not to say. 
Now to teach you this really critical skill that you'll need if you end up being Pete's PA, we've got an expert in communication and body language, Robert Thipp. So we're going to leave you in his capable hands and see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Rob. Thanks, Sarah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Now you have to remember that when you're dealing with people, it's not just the words that are coming out of your mouth that they're paying attention to. They're also paying attention to your body language because your body language can give you away. If you're saying one thing, but your body says another, the journalist, believe me, will believe your body, because your body doesn't know how to tell lies. I don't know much about body language, um, and I found that aspect really fascinating. If you talk with your hands open to people, they will feel that you're being honest with them. I'm sorry, I don't know that information. I can't give you that information. Little shrug of the shoulders. In which case, you're being open, relaxed with them, or do you talk to them palm down? In which case you'll be very controlling, you're taking control of the situation. They know damn well you've got the information, but you're not gonna give it. Yeah. Yeah? Also, the way you stand and the way you angle yourself to people. If you stand front on to somebody, face to face, you're gonna come across as a lot more hostile, there's a barrier between you. If you angle your body, so as you're as, almost as though there's a third person in, in, the, in the middle, you'll get on a lot better. Now, if you're gonna come across as friendly to somebody, you've gotta look in the eyes. But if you maintain too much eye contact, you'll actually come across as hostile and aggressive. However, sometimes you might want to become very assertive with somebody who's being a bit of a pain. In which case, change your gaze to here. Okay? So let's put a few of these things to the test and see how you get on. We've heard a rumor that Pete's actually getting married. Yeah. What can you tell me about that? Um, what can you tell me? Absolutely nothing, I'm afraid. It's, uh, long, it's just hearsay at the moment. Just rumours? Yeah. Do so you get all flustered? I only want to know. Is there a wedding? I nothing to say. I've, 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 is that because you don't know or you haven't no, actually got it? No, no, no. So there is info? Well, there may be. Our public relations department will be in touch. I thank who's, you. Who's asked? Oh. <laughs> well done. <laughs> However, all I would say to that is that immediately cut me off as aggressive and you, t you actually, t so if you want to deal with me again in future, yeah. do you think we're going to have a good rapport? As soon as you turn your back or angle yourself against somebody, you're saying, go away. Shelley, when you came up to stand up, you stood with your hands behind your back. Now that immediately makes you the one in control. However, you didn't give any other hand movements, you tended to keep your hands behind. And what you were doing, every time I asked you a question where you got a little bit flustered, your head goes and the eyes start <laughs> flashing like, ah, 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 ah. You're yeah. better off just taking a deep breath, a pause and going, actually, I don't know anything about that. But when you allow anyone to fluster you, they're in control, okay? Coming on to Damon, you were great because you kept a nice smiley face and it was, ha, 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 I didn't really know. No, I don't know anything about that. You know, just go away, thank you. And when I've got something, I'll come back to you. So it was very good. You're saying one thing with your mouth and another thing with your body. The journos or whoever will know they've got something and they'll keep pushing and pushing and pushing. So remember to be discreet with your body as well as your mouth. He's a fascinating guy. He, you know, I, I literally just spent hours picking his brains about stuff. Good guy. The candidates go to meet Pete's loved ones to state their case for becoming his PA. I've briefed my friends and family to kind of really try and judge these people on a professional level who they feel will be suitable to be around me because my friends and family have been around me for most of my life so they can probably see more objectively than I can who is going to be suitable. Pete's personality is so funny, he's really witty, really intelligent but very firm. So, you know, whoever's going to do this job has got to be really, really, really on the ball. It's not like a hierarchical thing. Everyone would be doing their bit, but it would have to be someone who just kind of got Pete. I mean, to live with, he can be quite demanding. It's vital that the PA is discreet because they will be working very closely with Pete. Pete wouldn't tolerate anything else from them. Natalie, you now have two minutes to sell yourself, starting now. OK, I think I should be Pete's PA because I already have um, an abundance of experience in the role. I'm currently a legal PA to five people. I deal with very strong characters, big egos. I think I'm calm in a crisis. I'm a very strong person. I think I'm good at solving problems. I work methodically, logically, I'm rational. I'm not too sure whether I impress Pete's friends and family at the moment. Um, I think I became quite rational 
family. She's absolutely unmissable. You know, she's, she certainly brings energy around. How ambitious are you? I am ambitious. Um, I've had a very unusual life. I'm a very strong person. Since the moment I came out of my mum, I have been fighting. I don't think Pete really wants someone to wimp around him. I definitely think I could get along and um, work with and hang out with um, Pete's friends in the ponds. They, I, I get a really good feeling when I'm around them. And I think we all also have a um, similar sense of humour. I think she's got a warm about her. I think she's very calm. Do you think you could really cope with being his PA? Yeah, definitely. I am quite confident in fashion. The book, no ties. Anything else to say? Still 20 seconds. Um, uh, you know, you, no, I can't think. 10 more seconds? <laughs> no pressure. I've got a lot of big characters in my life as friends and not as big as Pete. I'm only 23. In the 23 years, I've done a lot. I've done a lot of travelling, met a lot of people. Still got 20 seconds, Ian. <laughs> okay. Um, I work with the kids and I'm only 23. Mm. Still got 30 seconds. Okay. Um, Tell okay. it. I've got, as goes for kids, I've worked with kids doing a lot of sport, uh, I used to do play scheme with kids. I have a lot of friends of different groups back home mm. and they all all confide in me. Still got 10 sports. seconds. Yeah, <laughs> but this was actually free, so uh, we actually, oh, that was good. But no, I really like the job. <laughs> the longest minute ever. Your time is up. I think I did well, but I'm not that strong at uh, selling myself. Ian is such a sweet guy, a really, really lovely sweet guy. Do you think your personality is big enough to cope with people? Oh, I do hope so. Uh, I'm highly professional. I'm so honoured to have met you and Pete. I'm big enough and strong enough to take whatever comes my way and deal with it. I wouldn't discuss his issues with people, not even with his friends. I hope I sold myself well. Obviously, like I said, his friend's opinion are very, is very important to him. Nikki has got a really nice aura around her. How do you think you'd cope? I don't need water or food or anything. As when I'm in the zone of, like, this is work, I don't need to, any t I don't need to stop. Just get on with it until the job's done. Until you faint from lack of Well, maybe. Hydration. Exhaustion, yeah. I have empathy with you guys. Are you too posh for him? No. I'm very down to earth as well. I'm a very good, calm person to be around. Everybody seems to like me. An all-round good egg. That's what we like to hear. That's all I need to say, babes. Still got 10 seconds? No, I've said enough, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Then. Thank you. I felt that I'd, I'd not I'd sold myself within the realms of that time. I didn't need to say any more. From what I've seen of SJ, she seems like a really cool person, but again, she, she does come across as really nervous. There's like a certain nervous tension about her, I think. What would you rather be if you had the chance, a glamour model or Pete's PA? I'd rather be Pete's PA. My dream job would be to open up my own professional dance school. I don't know whether Pete does a lot of dance, but there must be some sort of basic technique that can help, you know, relieve his stress a little bit. I actually really, really well. I mean, each, each individual that I spoke to, you know, I told them what I'm all about. I told them that I'm very ambitious, um, which I think is the main sort of point. Of all of the contestants, Shelley is the one I remember the least. How loyal are you? I like to think I'm very loyal. Um, I'm very passionate about what I work as and what I do. I'm very caring. I can respect privacy, um, obviously, when, it, when, it, when, I, when I need to. Who was the last person you had a good bitch about? I mean, everybody bitches at some point. But I don't. I'm not quite sure what other, what other words you could possibly use, you know, to, you know in, in a short space of time to tell yourself. But I think I got the points across how, how, I, how I am. Quite middle of the road. I can't, I've not really got pluses or minuses on him from what I see I'm a bit uh, about him while the candidates are with Pete's loved ones he's gone to interrogate the people who know them best their friends and family it's a difficult one because sometimes friends and family will try and oversell them and say, oh, they're the one for the job. That's not really what I want to hear. I want to hear about them on a personal level, what kind of human being they actually are and what their experiences in life have been. And how does she cope under pressure? She copes very well under pressure. She's been in a business environment. She seems to she seems to cope extremely well under pressure. She can give a lot of emotional yeah. support. She's, She's had difficult emotion, emotional situations in her own life, so I think that actually makes it easier for her to be there for other people. So she's got a hard to gold really yeah i've known ian since about the age of eight long time right? yeah what can you tell me about him i've had um 
you know, times where, where I've lent on his shoulder. Like when I was up in Leeds by myself and he uh, he came with me and uh, he looked after me. OK, that's good. We're in another country and we need something doing in this country and because the time differences, do you think he'd be able to say, OK, guys, I know that's the last drink I'm having, I've got to go and do this, I've got to work now? Yeah, I mean, I think he, he, he would like that. You know, he would like um, someone to, to need him that much. Really wants yeah. to be needed. I think that would be a nice thing for him. Oh, that's great. He's one of those guys that if you go into a room and it's a bit dull, it won't take him long to light it up. So he can be a bit of a clown? Very much so. He could be hot-headed. In um, one way, you mean he'd go off on me like the clappers if I pissed him off? Or if somebody upset him, he can stand up. He may be a little guy, but he can stand up for himself. Why do you think that Denise would make a really, really good PA? She's hungry. Mm. She's a doer. And she just thrives on pressure. I lose my rag for nothing and I just blow up and then I completely forget it. Do you think she could cope with that or is she somebody who would sulk after it? No, she won't. Pete, she won't sulk. But she wouldn't fight back? No. Because she can't, because I'll let her. <laughs> She's seen me and mum wear for 20 years. In so what do you actually do? Um, chauffeur, state manager and manager for the rich and famous. Okay, okay. that's great. So she, she's really been around it's in her yeah. blood. Mm. You're proud of her, aren't you? Yeah, I'm very proud of her. But she's going to get there, Pete. She is going to get there. I'm sure she is. I'm sure. Hopefully, she starts with you, but she will get there. She's a winner. She's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> no, she is. She's hilarious. She's just brilliant. What do you think would qualify her through all of her humour and, you know, comedy skills to be my PA? Nat's been a PA for well over a decade, and she has the comedy skills to go with it. And I think that, I think that she, I just can see you in her head. It off. Even though she's completely crazy, that actually she's day really to day, organised. She's a, she's a legal secretary. She celebrates difference and uniqueness, and I mean, she actually knew somebody who used to keep a horse in their living room. <laughs> Why doesn't that surprise me? <laughs> she more or less runs my life for me. So. <laughs> so why does she run your life? What does she get out of that? Um. Know, it's just been a relationship, really. Just you sound like you got her as a love slave. No, <laughs> no. Do you think she can be tough? I oh, know she can be tough. I mean, she, she, she'll always win an argument when it's regarding us. So, yeah. How is she as a mate? <laughs> well, we trashed a hotel room after a wedding one night. So pretty good mate. She covered my ass. We were leaving in the morning. Lost my glasses. Couldn't find my shoes. Fell down the stairs on the way out. Ah, that's interesting. Did she find your glasses and find your shoes? Yeah. She likes to do that a yeah. lot for me. How do you think her skills at time keeping are and keeping me running on schedule? Fantastic. I wouldn't want to cross her if I was running late to meet her for lunch. <laughs> I would say she's quite fiery, but controlled. If I really got angry, do you think she'd hold a grudge? No, I think you sound very similar. God, I need someone like that. <laughs> As the elimination day approaches, Damon is finding it difficult to forget his indiscretion with the journalists. I should have known, I should have really realised um, what, what was going on. Some did, some didn't. I, I should have done, I should have just shut my bloody mouth. I was just ripped to pieces by Pete. And I had no, no ground to stand on. It is really, really hard coming in here because your emotions go AWOL, they go absolutely up the wall. You know, one minute you're up, you're flying high, and the next minute you're so far down, you're, you know, you have, you have no idea. It's mentally really tough. It's a, it's a hard, hard slog in here, 24-7. I really wouldn't know who was going because Pete was so upset. It just could be anybody. How do you know I've got skills? Do I need to say something? You don't know. You don't know. It's okay. But he's like Tigger. He's so excited to be here. He really wants a job. He's so enthusiastic. Donna Tigger wouldn't make a good PA. And I want it because I wouldn't be here if I didn't want it. You're not going to be my PA. Can you please leave the room? I, I really, do you know what? I really don't know who's going to be eliminated. Damon for talking so much maybe something like Shelley and SJ because she's just so emotionally vulnerable and and she talked as well the learning curve the pendulum of emotions is horrendous I really wouldn't know who was going because Pete was so upset it just could be anybody hi everybody hi well, it's that time again when we find out who has not got what it takes to be my PA and that person will have to leave the building immediately. 
You'll get judged today on how each of you did in the secretly filmed mini task, and also on what my closest friends and loved ones thought of each of you. Donna, can you tell me how it went? First task involved secret filming, and sadly, this showed that discretion wasn't their strong point. Shelley, you agreed with everything that the journalist said. You mentioned the Guy Ritchie film, Japanese makeup launch, clubbing with Boy George. Ian, you started off okay, but then you were led by others, and then you chatted away and talked about the adoption. Damon, you were complete motor mouth. You were giving it away for free. I mean, it was just, it was just shocking to watch. Natalie, um, you didn't say much about Pete, but you did talk about another celebrity, and that might be, impl you know, people might pick up that that could be Pete's opinion. So you need to be careful. Nikki, you didn't give anything up. You, you were very cagey. Uh, you didn't look like you, you trusted them and you, you did mention uh, about that if they said Pete that she you would have gone home. yeah however SJ mm -hmm. you were you were buddying up by the end of the night I mean you you were giving up information that the girl hadn't even said about you know you offered the information about the I baby I think she said have you heard about that and SJ went baby it wasn't great I'm really disappointed in it that's all I can say really so Rob how did they do in the second task well, the second task involved meeting some of your friends and loved ones, mm. and they had an opportunity to sell themselves. And some of the candidates redeemed themselves, and some of them again disappointed me. Shelley, you were told to sell yourself as a PA, and I heard more about your glamour modelling in. You ran dry, you ran out of steam, there was just no oomph there. Denise, you came across as focused, ambitious, and determined. That's all I need to say. Damon, for some reason when you were selling yourself, you came across it as a little lackluster. Natalie, you came across as the party girl, the class clown. Nikki, you came across very well. You built a strong rapport with Pete's loved ones and friends. And SJ, you actually said yourself that you're quite a stressful person. Um, and that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for someone who can stay calm no matter what is hitting the fan. Can I just say, when they said the stress um, question, I said, I don't do stress at work. That's actually what I said. Okay, I've heard enough now. Nikki, you did really, really well. See you safer this week. You can leave the room now and relax a bit. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Good luck, Nikki. Denise, for now you're safe. Please leave the room. Thank you. Well, Natalie, you didn't sell me out. You slipped up a little bit on a professional basis. You know what you did, but you didn't sell me out. So you can now leave the room. Thank you very much. Good luck, everyone. Ian, your best friend sold you to me really, really well. He spoke of a lot of qualities in you that I haven't seen yet, and I hope I get to see them this week. So you can now leave the room. As I'm sure you already know, this all went a bit tits up. Now I'd like each of you in turn to step forward and explain to me exactly why and what could be done about it. Shelley. I did slip up. Um, I wasn't aware of those two people that were in that room. I should be aware with the industry, obviously, that I have been in. And I will take all those comments on board and work with okay, it. So far. Okay, Damon. <laughs> you were a bad boy. Tell me why. I bought up the biggest. I, I take it on board completely what I did. And it's an absolute cock up. I should have been totally aware of what's going on. Had you had a lot to drink? I actually don't drink Donna, so I can't. Be, I can't unfortunately, can't even blame alcohol. Uh. That's very brave of you to actually admit that because in your position I'd have said I was absolutely slaughtered no, and I couldn't help yeah, it. Yeah, you could have made an excuse you know. or something. Well, thank you for being truthful. SJ, can you explain something to me? Yeah, it went very wrong. It's, uh, I was absolutely shattered, no excuse to be shattered. If I was your PA, I would be so tight that I wouldn't even tell anyone anything about you. I have done such confidential jobs, I've toured, I've had such amazing confidential details. I've run a record, I mean, I've done so much, my CV. Damon, if you don't go, who do you think out of these two should go in your place? I think she would understand if I did say SJ. Okay. You want this job? Yeah, desperately. Who would you get rid of? I'd 
conversation any. Why? I feel that Damon has better skills at this moment in time. Okay, Ashley, I understand where you're coming with with the skills. I have to say what no, I No, well, I can understand where you're coming from when you said about the skills and everything, but at the end of the day, I've been consistent in every task. This is the first time I've been in this room. So who do you think, Shelley? Who I do you think, think SJ, Shelley? because she's bringing the house down. And I want it, because I wouldn't be here if I didn't want it. That's and that's, that's an admirable thing. I personally don't believe it's all on experience. It's about common sense and it's about passion for the job. It is, and I do have a passion, that's the thing. I always work hard and put 100% in everything. Okay. And I believe I can do Just this. Just try that's and not get too upset. It's obvious that you really want the job. It's obvious that, mm -hmm. obvious that each of you really, really wants the job. Well, it gets tougher every time. And now we're going to have to put our heads together and talk this over. And when you're brought back into the room, you'll find out who's not going to be my PA and that person will have to leave the house. Thank you. Can you please leave the room? She doesn't know what skills I have. Um, if or I think I would have better, I've got better skills than herself because I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not an emotional wreck like herself. I think Shelley for me was really disappointing in the discretion task. She said it herself. She's worked in the magazine, the glamour media industry, so she should know to zip it. She feels terrible now, though, and she she says she's learnt from what she saw. I mean, that was such a shock. And also, she she has got the passion. She burst out crying. She I did. do I do think she wants to do it, and I think she's learned a lesson. Well, what about the dreaded Damon? That discretion task was a washout. When I watched the footage back, I thought, oh, he's pissed, mm -hmm. and he's just got verbal diarrhea. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't drink, and that scares the hell out of me. But he's like Tigger. He's so excited to be here. He really wants a job. He's so enthusiastic. Donna Tigger wouldn't make a good PA. We've got to talk about SJ. That big mouth is, is a real problem. And she also wasn't drunk. No, but in her defence, she was exhausted. She has the right background. She has worked in this industry. She knows a lot of what has. Has. We're going to have to really make a decision here. And again, it's another tough one. I've got to think and think really quickly and I've got to make the right decision and I think I have so should we get them back in here as I'm sure you already know this piece of paper in my hands is somebody's CV and that person doesn't get to be my PA. Shelley, this is the first time you've shown any passion or emotion to actually get this job. Damon, what you did was absolutely unforgivable. SJ, you're actually causing me a lot of concern now because you're on a bit of an emotional roller coaster. time in the house. I wanted the job, but the process hasn't really agreed with the kind of person I am. The elimination was awful. Ele all elimination days are awful. I'm sad I won't be Pete's I think I would have been a terrific asset to their team. Congratulations to both of you. It's a tough lesson. I hope you both learned a lesson and can take something really positive away from this and improve in the next tasks. Okay, thanks. You can leave the room.
with SJ eliminated, six candidates remain who will become Pete's PA. Next time on Pete's PA, Shelley and Ian come to blows. It was just like a ball in a china shop. That's how it just come across and we just needed to, you know, we could have got stuff because we already know them. I understand where you're coming from, Ian, but like I said, we've only, we've only got a short amount of time. We've and got it, to get and, these products. But because we have a short amount of time, that's why we have to concentrate on what's right. Damon and Denise struggle to agree. It's got to be unanimous at the end, like, so we can... Mm. No, I know, but what I'm saying is, you know, express your opinion. Oh. Pete has the time of his life. It's fantastic. I could spend my entire life doing this. And Donna loses her patience. She's been outrageous. I think she's been completely unprofessional and I am furious. Ghost Whisperer continues its blockbusting run on Tuesday nights here on Living and tomorrow it's gonna kick off because somebody knows Melinda's little secret. That's tomorrow night at nine. But next up, forget Tutankhamun in the news today. If you're looking for a mummy, stay tuned for CSI. CSI.